on the way with the, uh, or sorry, Nikki is on the way with the microphone. Hi, Kara, uh, excellent Hi. talk. Um, I think your talk kind of hit on one of the issues that I've seen working in a similar, similar setting in that um, there's really this balancing of hope, but a realistic appraisal that, you know, sometimes the experience of pain doesn't necessarily go away. And, and you know, how do we balance that in some of the conversations that we have with patients? Because I think, I, I think it's, sometimes we can be uh, a little too hopeful and that kind of blinds sometimes, or it overpowers the idea that we, that the evidence shows that we can continue to experience pain for long periods of time. Maybe. I think that this is where the cognitive behavioral therapy portion could be quite helpful because we do, the psychologist primarily will describe, and we can do this too, as, 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 if you're not a psychologist, we can all as providers do this, is describe that pain may be there, but it doesn't necessarily have to rule our lives. We have two kind of meters, okay? We have the emotional meter and we have the pain meter. And um, to know that you can actually spend time with your grandchildren or you can go to the park or you can spend time with your friends and you may be, still be in pain, but doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be terribly unhappy at that moment. And then over time, by them integrating themselves into society, eventually, um, the hopefully, it, that the hope is that the pain will become a little less of a dominant feature in their lives, move differently, maybe we're changing neuro tags there. Um, it, it's difficult, because I do get a number of patients who come in and say, I'm still in pain. But there's a certain level of acceptance that they go through, and sometimes they, even though they're still feeling the pain, I still give them the hope that if they continue to pace and gradually expose them, themselves to activity, that pain levels will eventually come down. Um, and just try to emphasize um, the positive, possible, the positive aspects of, of of what has changed in their thinking. Now, did I answer your question? No. We have a question up here in the front. Yep. Uh, and while Nikki is on the way with the microphone, uh, one quick question. Uh, oh yeah. So, if you are working in a healthcare facility that where the team is not familiar with biopsychosocial uh, uh, concepts, how do you introduce that? That's a great question, um, and I don't know if I have an easy answer for that. Um, I uh, one thing that I do, what we are starting to do, is uh, go through and I do basically a explain pain or pain education course for clinicians. Um, and introduce the difference between structure and biopsychosocial and illustrate the, the benefits of, of maybe trying to integrate more of a biopsychosocial approach. Um, and we've been pretty well received with that. And also um, catching some of these physicians early too. I, we're starting to work with primary care residents. Um, I get to, they get to shadow um, our department and uh, Trying to get them young and early, <laughs> teach them about the biopsychosocial approach. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. We had a question right here. Um, no, uh, in the front row here. Yes. And you'll be the last one. Hi, Stephanie. <clears throat> um, the Mosley Pain Knowledge Questionnaire is. Um, do you use that for a measure of change over time? Is there a significance number on that? It's more of an exercise. I don't use it to collect data. I don't give patients the pressure. Oh, you need to turn this in because I'm not actually trying to collect data and perform a study based on that response. But I use it as kind of a tool for conversation and a tool for problem solving. Is there a number that's good or bad? I think 100% is good. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know actually the, the metrics on what would be considered maybe. Uh, Significant change, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for a good presentation. Thank you. Um, actually, I have three questions. Is that allowed? Are they short? We'll, well see how the first one goes. Oh, let's see. The first two is, um, um, what do you think about uh, calling it pain management? Um, with our current knowledge, is that problematic or is that fine? You hit on a good point because <laughs> our department is called pain management. Um, and so that's what I call it in my presentation. But when I'm in front of patients and I'm describing that you're here in pain management, but I'm here to 
we are here to try to treat. I don't like that term. I don't think patients want to hear that their pain is being managed. Like, I'm managing my pain right now. I'm still in pain and I'm managing it, right? So um, without trying to give too much of a false hope, I say I think there's really hope that we can treat your pain, but it will take time and you have to be, be persistent with following through with your care. Exposing yourself gradually to things, pacing yourself. Um, you talked about posture a few times, and uh, I find it problematic because uh, people have a tendency to consider the right posture, the wrong posture. Um, as you said, it, it's move, but um, I didn't really get where do you stand on posture? Do you believe it's, uh, there can be faulty posture, bad posture, or what? I didn't. Catch right. Exactly no, I what think that's meant. a touchy subject. I think for a lot of folks, there's I think newer evidence to show that that um, having perfect alignment is not necessarily the best thing. You know, it, everyone's different. Everyone's built differently, in my opinion. Um, this is opinion, so let's just say that. Um, and I make a point day two or three of the session is that I would like to see you guys move frequently. Sit like this. Cross one leg. Cross the other leg. Put a stool under your feet. Put something underneath your arms. You know, get up frequently. I just, I want to see people moving. I don't think it, we're meant to sit eight hours a day. I think it's very detrimental to our health. And so if they can't get up, I say you just need to shift and move as, as often as you can. I uh, totally agree. Uh, but you just mentioned it, perfect alignment. What is perfect alignment? We, we need to be able to, yeah. Well, right, you know. right. So it depends on who you're talking to. I yeah. Suppose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm not even going to go on that. Could you could you elaborate on your flare management plan? Oh, and then. No, no, you go ahead. Okay. Should I answer this one? If yes, you can. Okay. Um, so flare management plan. So the key here, you know, that this this last one. Whoosh, we want them to be able to stop the bullets on their own a little bit. So flare up management go from anything from trying to, if you didn't pace, learn from that experience. Maybe keep a pain log and see what were you doing that caused the flare. Um, educate the patients that maybe you would flare up without any reason at all and to not panic about that. Okay. So behaviorally and thoughtfully, how do you react to your flare up? And then talk about some of the physical management of pain, whether using ice pack, heat pack, repositioning yourself so that you're comfortable, trying to breathe and relax and calm and soothe the nervous system. That's a real big emphasis for me is that day one I say your, your, your system is feeling way over threatened so we need to work on calming and soothing the nervous system. Um, Would you so show a good us step. that movement you showed me last night? I don't remember what, oh the yoga, yes. <laughs> well, you know, just day one, you guys can all do this. It should all stand up because we all need a break. It's just standing up and it's very simple. I think Neil Pearson will have better things for you guys, right? But just take it, we start with a big belly breath, breathing in, exhale, and now raise your arms up, breathing in, and then exhale, let the arms come down, I call this my Michael Phelps move, inhale up, and gently rotate to one side, inhale up. Rotate to the other side. Wake up, stretch, hands, fingertips on the shoulders. Inhale, ex elbows back. Exhale, elbows together. Inhale. And exhale. And relax. So we do more than that, but honestly, I think most patients can handle that one. So it's very non-threatening. It's getting the patients moving. It's getting them breathing. So it's usually where I start, but the patients are not handling much. Cara, thank you very much. You're mm -hmm. This would be a good time.